In the previous program, we discussed the need to adjust system pressure to compensate for changes in ground speed. In this program, we'll discuss how to calibrate your spray system and why it is key to an effective application. The easiest way to understand how nozzle type, orifice size, and pressure all interact to achieve the right flow rate and droplet size is to actually go through a calibration example. When we're calibrating a sprayer, we're trying to achieve the gallons per acre or gallons per thousand square feet that we need to get the right amount of spray solution and therefore pesticide on the target. There are three things that de determine how many gallons per acre you apply. First one is the nozzle flow rate measured in gallons per minute. So for one minute's time, how many gallons of spray come out of that nozzle? The second thing is the ground speed at which the sprayer will be operating at. This is measured in miles per hour. The third thing is the effective sprayed width. We measure the effective sprayed width on a per nozzle basis, so it's essentially how wide an area does each nozzle have to cover. It's not the total width of the nozzle pattern, it's how wide each nozzle has to cover, and that is the nozzle spacing. So if your nozzles are 15 inches apart, their effective sprayed width is 15 inches, 20 inches apart, the effective sprayed width is 20 inches. The ground speed is based on the type of sprayer we're using and the terrain that we're going to be spraying on. So we already kind of know how fast we'll be going when we make that application. The effective sprayed width, it's the distance between the nozzles, that too is also set. So really what we're going to do is determine what flow rate do we need out of our nozzle in order to apply a determined gallons per acre at a certain speed with nozzles at a certain spacing. So we use this formula and we take the gallons per acre, multiply that by the ground speed in miles per hour, and in turn multiply that by W, the effective spray width in inches, and divide it by a constant, 5,940. The 5,940, it's a constant that we use to convert all the different measurement units. And that will tell us then the flow rate we need out of the nozzle in gallons per minute. So let's say we need to apply 44 gallons per acre. We're going to be traveling at three miles per hour to make the application, and our nozzles are at 20 inches. So we multiply 44 gallons per acre times three miles per hour times 20 inches, and divide that by 5,940, and that equals 0 0.44 gallons per minute. So we need a flow rate out of our nozzle at 0 0.44 gallons per minute. Moving on to an example, we've decided to use turbo T-Jet nozzle tips to make our application. We've just determined that we need a nozzle flow rate of 0.44 gallons per minute out of the nozzle. And in this example, let's say we are applying a fungicide and the label has said that we'll get the best results using a medium droplet spectrum. So let's look at the nozzle catalog page for the Turbo T-Jet nozzle. The far left column is all the orifice sizes available for this nozzle type. Each color code there represents the orifice size. So look at the top, we have an orange, that is the TT11001, all the way to the white at the bottom, TT11008. You'll notice each one of these orifice sizes has the TT at the beginning of the name. That refers back to the nozzle type, Turbo T-Jet. The next three numbers, 110, refer to the nozzle fan angle. When this nozzle is operated at 40 PSI, it creates a flat fan pattern that is 110 degrees wide. The last two digits represent the flow rate. If you look at that 01, put a decimal between the 0 and 1, it's 0 0.1. So at 40 PSI, this nozzle will output 0 0.1 gallons per minute. We go down to the nozzle on the last part of the page, TT11008. Again, it's a turbo T-Jet nozzle. It has a 110 degree fan angle. 08, we put a decimal between the 0 and 8. This nozzle produces a flow rate of 0 0.8 gallons per minute when operated at 40 PSI. So we, what we would do then is we look at the next column. The next column is the pressure, the PSI range for this nozzle. You notice no matter what orifice size you get, the nozzle should be operated somewhere between 15 and 90 PSI. The next column is the droplet size. This shows you the droplet spectra classification when we operate that specific tip at a, at a, at a different pressure, it tells us the droplet spectrum created by there. And then the next two columns are the nozzle flow rate. The first column is the flow rate in gallons per minute, and the column just to its right is the flow rate in fluid ounces per minute. So remember, for our example, we need 0.44 gallons per minute. 
So we're going to start out with the fourth column from the right, and we're going to be looking down the column for that 0.44 gallons per minute. So we're going to zoom in there on the TT11004. Notice if we operate this nozzle at 40 PSI, we would achieve a flow rate of 0.4 gallons per minute. If we operate it at 50 PSI, we're at 0.45 gallons per minute. So the flow rate we need, 0.44 gallons per minute, is going to be achieved somewhere between 40 and 50 PSI. Another concept that's very important to understand is what happens as you change speeds during the application if you're using a flow control system. As I mentioned earlier, most of the time, the speed you operate the sprayer at during the application is based on the type of sprayer you're using, the terrain, and the location. How fast can you go while you're making that application? As you vary speed, though, if you don't change any of the other variables, you also change your gallons per acre. When you're using a flow control system, the computer will compensate for those speed changes by changing the nozzle flow rate. So an increase in speed will result in an increase in flow rate. A decrease in speed will result in a decrease in flow rate. The system changes the flow rate by changing pressure. And that's a key point because the change in pressure doesn't just change the flow rate, it also changes the droplet size. We're going to go through another example to highlight this. In this case, at 20 inch centers, 20 inches apart, we're applying 44 gallons per acre. And our initial travel speed is 6 miles per hour, so we are traveling a little bit faster. If we use the same calibration formula we used earlier, we determine that we need a flow rate of 0.88 gallons per minute. Go to our nozzle catalog, and staying with the Turbo T-Jet nozzle for this example, we look down that fourth column there to the left, we see the TT11005. If we operate that nozzle at 90 PSI, we're putting out a flow rate of 0.75 gallons per minute. If we are concerned about increasing our pressure to 90 PSI due to risk of off-target movement, and we cannot find a turbo T-Jet nozzle that gives us a flow rate of 0.75 gallons per minute and medium droplet size, we must consider using a different nozzle. An extended range T-Jet nozzle, XR11008, produces an output of 0.89 gallons per minute at a pressure of 50 PSI and produces a medium droplet size as specified by the fungicide manufacturer. Armed with this information, you should now have a better understanding of how nozzle type, orifice size, and pressure combine to provide optimal flow rate and droplet size, allowing you to easily calibrate your sprayer to achieve the correct amount of on-target input delivery.